Let me just say a couple of things here in my riff. Why is it that President Biden, Secretary of State Antony Blinken, and White House spokesman John Kirby, day in and day out, continue the fiction that Iran has no direct involvement with the terrorists in Hamas, or for that matter, Islamic Jihad, or for that matter, Hezbollah, before the barbaric invasion of Israel on October 7th? Why do they maintain this fiction? Why are they maintaining this lie? Look at today. Front page Wall Street Journal, exclusive news story, headlined, Hamas fighters trained in Iran before October 7 attacks. The subheader, roughly 500 Palestinian militants got specialized combat instruction at Iranian facilities as recently as September. It's a long, carefully constructed news article, and about a third of the way in is this quote. Before the war, Iran directly assisted Hamas with money, training, and weapons and technological know-how, said Rear Admiral Daniel Hagari. He is the military's chief spokesman in Israel. And then Admiral Hagari adds, quote, even now Iran is helping Hamas with intelligence, end quote. Right after the October 7th catastrophe, the Wall Street Journal ran a story with the headline, Iran helped plot attack on Israel over several weeks. And by the way, the Washington Post corroborated that story the next day. Now, to be fair, this morning's Wall Street Journal story quotes an Air Force, U.S. Air Force general who maintains the fiction that there is no direct connection between the Hamas attacks and Iran. But looking at this and other news reports, news reports, mind you, not just editorials, news reports, I think the U.S. government is making a big mistake denying Iran's direct involvement. This is starting to have a Vietnam feel to it. Remember those days when Democratic and Republican administrations lied to the American public about the extent of U.S. involvement in the Vietnamese War. Now, oddly, from a political standpoint, Americans, by huge majorities, support the Israeli cause, and they have an enormous distrust of Iran. So I don't understand the political judgment, much less the highly flawed military judgment. Now, as we know, for nearly three years, President Biden has tried to negotiate a nuclear deal with Iran. He inherited this stupidity from President Obama. Obama's deal would never have passed the Senate, so they put it together through the United Nations instead. And they attached U.N. Security Council sanctions on that misbegotten deal. Lately, however, when the U.N. ballistic missile sanctions expired last week, they were not even snapped back. So now, even those unenforced sanctions have essentially expired. But the Biden administration has also chosen not to enforce the economic sanctions that were put in place by the Trump administration. Those economic and energy sanctions that were strictly implemented by Mr. Trump and his administration basically bankrupted Iran. So when Trump took out Iran's top military man, Soleimani, the Iranians didn't do anything because they were broke. Today, as we all know, and as the facts show, Iran is flush with energy and foreign exchange reserves that they have used to finance Hamas and other terrorist groups. Indeed, before the October 7th blow-up, Biden was trying to give Iran even more cash. Essentially, the key point, I suppose, is to acknowledge Iran's direct role in training and financing the terrorist attacks against Israel and the United States. To do that would require an acknowledgement from Biden that his Iranian policy of appeasement has gone wrong, very wrong, from the very beginning. Apparently, he doesn't want to make that acknowledgement. So he and his spokespeople have come up with this fiction, which at best is a semantic and at worst is an outright lie. That Iran had no direct involvement in Israel and American massacres, you know, you can parse words, but you can't parse the truth. Iran is unappeasable. Without deterrence, Iran will continue as the largest state sponsor of terrorism. The Bidens have got to understand this hard fact. Iran will never change. It will never change its ways, nor will its terrorist puppets. And the President Biden wants to show Americans and the rest of the world that he has figured this out. Then he must, at a bare minimum, reinstate the economic and energy sanctions of the Trump years. And the quickest way I can think to do that would simply be to interdict or impound an Iranian ship on the high seas that might be carrying oil or weapons or anything else forbidden under those sanctions.
Those sanctions were imposed legislatively by the U.S. Congress and enforced by the Trump administration. To be real simple, I call it stop a ship. And if you do, you'll send a message. Go back to the Trump model. A change of Biden's policies toward Iran that is honest and transparent reappraisal of the failure, well, that's the best thing Biden can do to protect Israel and the United States. And then just please quit lying to us. All right?